Former Fox News host Tucker Carlson will host a Republican presidential primary forum with five GOP candidates this Friday. That's according to Blaze Media. The forum will reportedly not include former president and current 2024 nominee Donald Trump. The event will, however, feature Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, former Vice President Mike Penn, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, and entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy. It will be held at the Family Leadership Summit in Des Moines, Iowa. So Tucker's kind of a free agent at the moment. He is, uh, he is able to uh, host this debate, which will not include Trump, but uh, does include several of the other, um, obviously much more distant after DeSantis. DeSantis polling like 20% or something, and then these people um, with um, much less support. But, yeah. um, but you know, just as I think it's important for the Democratic side to actually do debates, to actually have Biden confront Marianne Williamson, RFK Jr., and anyone else who happens to be in the race uh, at that point, um, so too should the GOP have an actual debate with its many, many candidates. Yeah, so. I think that's smart. Just because Donald Trump might not want there to be a primary mm -hmm. or uh, Joe Biden might not want there to be a primary, doesn't mean that the rest of the candidates have to uh, fall in line or that the party itself has to fall in line. So there are obvious incentives you know, that explain why uh, Trump and Biden wouldn't want to jeopardize their forerunner stat status. I mean, Trump isn't just ahead of the rest of the pack by whatever, 70, 80 points. Um, he's ahead of Ron DeSantis in Florida by 20 points, according to the most recent poll from, I believe, yesterday. So yeah. when you're crushing the game like this, there's no reason necessarily to want to undermine yourself by having some faux pas or gaffe in the context of a head-to-head -head matchup with your opponents, at least not at this stage. However, I think that it creates energy in the party. It br brings attention to potential fresh blood and newcomers in subsequent election cycles to have events like this. And given the prominence of somebody like Tucker Carlson, I think this is a really smart way to go about it. Now, I'm curious, do you think this is some reflection of the relationship between Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson potentially souring or some in some way. Do you wish, you know, from from, mm -hmm. from Trump's standpoint, arguably you would prefer that none of these people get the platform that Tucker is offering them right now? Do you think we can read into that at all? Uh, I, I see what you're getting at. Uh, Tucker obviously said recently in this interview with Russell Brand just last Friday that he thinks Trump's great. He loves Trump. He said he doesn't know whether he'll be a good president or will win or not make any like a political predictions, yeah. but that he really appreciates what Trump has done, particularly on foreign policy. It sounds like my understanding is the relationship between Tucker and Trump is pretty good in general. Um, I think I think Trump respects Tucker, honestly, is the way it comes across. Um, Tucker famously went at the very beginning of COVID, right? He flew to Mar-a-Lago to meet with Trump to, to urge him to take uh, the pandemic more seriously at the very beginning, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of funny in hindsight. But, uh, but I, I don't think, you know, Tucker, again, he likes a lot of Trump's ideas. I don't think he feels, I don't think it's, I don't think he feels sycophantic about it, that like, He's not going to do. He's not going to take this opportunity to host an important debate just because maybe Trump wouldn't like it. He doesn't seem quite so. Like he's called out Trump on his show for foreign policy related reasons when he disagreed with him. Sure, but we also know from the Dominion lawsuit, of course, that he, you know he was t he was texting mm -hmm. about how happy he was that we quote are very very close to being able to ignore Trump most l nights. I can't. I truly can't wait that he was um, um, critical of his first term, saying we're all pretending we've got a lot to show for it because admitting what a disaster has been is too tough to digest, but come on, there really isn't an upside to Trump. He denigrated his business abilities, um, saying that Trump's talent is to, quote, destroy things. He could easily destroy us if we play it play it wrong. And that's so much of the what we learned from the Dominion lawsuit was that he was frustrated right. with Fox News for having to run cover for Trump at the same time that he himself was critical of his colleagues who said honest and openly critical things about Trump. So he's been in this limbo for some time where he's had to kind of have a public-facing view and a private-facing view. And I'm really curious to see how 
that continues to evolve now that he's not constrained in any way by what by what Fox News wanted of him. Right. But he is still constrained by the thing that constrained Fox News, which is that most conservatives who are Trump, who are his audience do still have very fond feelings about Donald Trump. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the guy. I don't know what his genuine feelings are. I gather that he does appreciate Trump's foreign policy and is frustrated in the ways maybe that Trump has sabotaged himself. Uh, I mean, I, I would ag agree with a lot of the criticisms he just made there, even though Trump's instincts on Iraq and Ukraine have been, um, have been good. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of times with Trump, there's just not the right follow through. Or there's the appointment of people who are totally contrary to the policy or there's the, you know, the unforced errors the, the boxes of documents type sure. things. Uh, but anyway, regarding the debate, I'm interested to see you know, what Tucker focuses on, obviously. Um, is he going to focus on foreign policy? Is he going to drill down on some of these profound differences between, uh, between a, a Nikki Haley and, uh, and theoretically a Ron DeSantis? We've got to know more about what his sure. foreign policy views actually are, um, you know, where he, uh, how much he asks about, um, about wokeness, about those kinds of things. Um, I, look, there's no one, you know, love him or hate him, there's really few people in the conservative media world who are as um, discerning of these intellectual differences in the party. So I think he's, the, he's a great person to actually host this. Uh, yeah, I, I'd agree, especially just because People will tune in, mm -hmm. and we've talked about whether or not, you know, the left, the Democrats, could similarly have a, a debate that would allow these candidates to have a similar kind mm -hmm. of platform and let the American public, who's largely being gaslit about there being <laughs> any options at all outside of uh, Joe Biden, to see who is actually in the race. And I think it does come down to, since none of the legacy media shows are going to likely host something like that. Is there a similar figure that is generally broadly right. left-leaning who could host something like that? I don't know, a Glenn Greenwald type or something like that, presuming that they wouldn't be willing to come to an independent show like ours to host this sort of debate. It is worth noting that not everybody who is running in the Republican field has been invited to this. It seems Did notably— they have some kind of cutoff for numbers? Uh, uh, unclear. I mean, the, the, the notable admission, it seems um, to me— Christy? is Chris Christie, yeah. who gets a huge platform from the liberal media, who have adored him in the Never Trump style for a long well, time Well, there's now. been some kind of, uh, this might be, uh, there's some kind of controversy over, like, you're not allowed to participate in the debates unless you agree to support whoever the nominee will be. Um, and and I, I think Christie has said, well, he's not going to support the nominee if it's Trump. Otherwise, yes, but not Trump. And that might be, I don't know if that's the, the difference or why he's not on this list or it has to do with his poll numbers, but I, that has, I've seen that come up in other places. Yeah, like, are you willing yeah. to say you, you'll vote, for, you know, sign the pledge that you'll vote for the person so you can participate in the, in the Republican, the GOP-sanctioned official debates? Right. I mean, that's going to be an issue, as I understand it, with respect to uh, Donald it's, it's Trump as well. Trump, yeah. and it's like, I'm not, I'm not supporting whoever. It's me I'm supporting. <laughs> right, and there's some question about whether or not if Trump were willing to participate yeah. in a debate, which gives it you know, the ultimate legitimacy, they would actually hold him to that. I mean, even if he were to say that he would take the loyalty pledge, do we believe that he is going to follow through? And at this point, right. does it really matter? Is it just performative? You no, know, I had my fingers crossed behind my back. <laughs> Right. Um. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a rundown from about um, a week ago uh, in the New York Times about who has and hasn't taken the loyalty pledge. Donald mm -hmm. Trump, unclear. He has not said whether he will. In February, he refused to commit to supporting the eventual nominee, uh, telling conservative radio host Hugh Hewitt it would have to depend on who the nominee was. Uh, the, that was, but that was before the RNC made the pledge debate requirement. Ron DeSantis, unclear, asked last month whether he would support Trump in a general election. He didn't give a straight answer, saying, you respect the process and you respect people's decisions, but he made no uh, commitment. Uh, Chris Christie has given mixed messages. Uh, as you said, he said, I will do what I need to to be up on that stage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the pledge just as seriously as Donald Trump took it in 2016, adding that he considered it useless and that he had told the RNC as much. Trump was also lashing out uh, yesterday at the I Iowa's Republican governor, Kim Reynolds, mm -hmm. for just saying that she's going to be neutral mm -hmm. in the feud between Trump and DeSantis. Mm -hmm. And Trump was like, 
Neutral's not good enough. <laughs> not good enough. <laughs> I did see that. Uh, which, again, puts him at odds with yet another relatively popular Republican governor in a state he needs to win if he is the nominee. It's Although he, he, so didn't, me, he didn't win Iowa in 2016, and it didn't stop him. In 2016, that's right. But he yeah. won it in 2020. I can't even remember. Yeah. I, was, I was too preoccupied with our own Iowa shenanigans in the Democratic <laughs> primary. <laughs> More rising right after this.